taking a peek at the multimedia screen for the Nero. So there are technically two different screens that are available. It's either going to be this larger 10.25 inch or there's a smaller 8 inch instead. Big difference between the two, this one has factory navigation and it also has support for wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we need to be hooked up through USB. The smaller screen that's inside of the entry level base LX model is going to be a wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay and it's a slightly smaller setup. So a few small things between the two of them. But let's dive into the screen. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know. Starting off, this is going to be our base home screen. So we've got date, time, things like that. Swiping across brings us into a few other options. So we can push here if we want to set up user profiles. Big benefit there is that it's going to remember our phones, all of our presets for AM, FM, things like that. So if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, definitely recommend setting up unique profiles because you can set a ton of different options right to the individual profile. It's really nice. We can press home to get back to the home screen, push this button to either get to the display to turn it off. So if you want just a base calming screen instead, button press to bring it back to life, or you can edit the home icons. So if you don't like the way that these things are laid out, you can just do a drag and you can drop it anywhere you want. If you've played around, and that's even like between screens. So if you want your radio on the secondary screen instead, you'd have the flexibility to do it. And then if you've moved things around too much, you don't like the way it looks, we just go reset. It's gonna bring it right back to the factory default screen there instead. So it is very straightforward, but I love the fact that we can adjust this thing if we wanna customize it that little bit more. Oh, wrong one. Pushing up, we've also got the direct op option in order to access our user manual. So while you're going to do, push there. Perfect. There we go. Helps if you're on photo mode, not video. But this is going to launch you up into the key manual online instead, which is kind of neat. So you do have that available too, which is kind of nice. You do have all of the, obviously, your user manual right from the factory too. But this is kind of nice to know that you can just kind of jump in there if you need to. We've got our current time, date on top of that. Now, because this is the hybrid, we've got a hybrid screen that's going to show a few things. So we've got fuel economy, is kind of neat we can reset if we want to moving into how much of oh it's actually it takes you to the exact same screen all right and then how much is being used so how much fuel are we using versus how many electric miles are we using instead so it's kind of nice it's really really neat and it's going to look slightly different for the plug-in and then obviously for the electric as well energy flow how much is of what system is being used as we go it's pretty neat moving back back again we've got factory navigation inside of this thing and the factory nav screen, very responsive. We've got pinch to zoom capabilities. And then as you see there, drag to drop. And that's essentially looking for a route or for a direction to our place to go. So we could do that. We can set it as a destination if we want to. Press, boop, back home. We can change what's going on with our display. So are we head up display, etc. Navigation, we can adjust the different sound effects here. So if you don't want the sound happening, we can adjust that. We can adjust our voice as well. So as we come to an upcoming turn, you can hear how loud or how quiet it's going to be as you go, or you can mute it out. Volume priority is if we have our radio going and then we come up to it, oh, and then we come to an upcoming turn, it's going to lower our volume for us instead. We could either, if we don't want to do a pinch to zoom, plus minus this way instead, we can have it adjust automatically for us or be at certain menus. So the auto adjust, as we get closer to our destination, it's going to either zoom in or out for us, just depending on how close we are to the final destination. Along the side here, we can also adjust this out. So if you want kind of like a split view between AM, FM, things like that, so we'd have that option available, which is kind of neat. Or we can just go full screen map instead. Pushing the menu button gives you a few options. So what's nearby, you can save different options. You can look at traffic information or you can toggle the display off again, and then also search for an address. So you can search by coordinates if you want to, so it's latitude, longitude, if you wanted to go that route, or you can start searching for different things. So if you wanted to, let's say, go to a Tim Hortons, you've got that option. I'm gonna to go to one a bit further away, I'll show you why in a second. So if we set it as a destination, Key Connect Services, I'm gonna say no for now. So you can see there, we've got the route that's, a, that's available. But if we zoom out, we've got another route. So we've got the recommended versus the alternate route. So we can go one way or the other. You can add in a waypoint. So if you wanted to stop part way and say, I don't know, maybe go for a gas station first. We're going to stop at Husky. Okay. 
and we're going to calculate. And then we can add multiple waypoints in there again. So what it's doing is it's telling us this is the route we need to go in order to get to these different options, whether we don't want to go route one, two, whatever the case may be. You start guidance. There you go. And it's going to tell you which way you go. Same idea, we can do a pinch to zoom to kind of get more of a like longer view, or we can add in another waypoint there too by moving and adjusting. So very straightforward. This one's kind of neat, so it jumps us back in, and then we can cancel the route out. You can see there, route's canceled, and it's that simple. Back to our menu again. Again, like I said, we can turn display off, or we've got different options to adjust to what route we're going. And we've got all of our destinations that we've traveled to now. So if we want to go back to that Tim Hortons again, we can do that. We hit no, and then it gives us our route options there. And then we can also avoid certain things. So if we, oh, where'd that go? Route avoidance options. So do we want to avoid ferries, toll roads, carpool lanes, and things like that? So you do have a few different options that are available there. Pull ourselves back to center, and then you can go back if you want to. Go home instead. Series of different other options. So we can search for addresses, look at point of interest icons, saved places, dealerships. If we had an active route, we can cancel it. We can look at the overview and look at different route options. And then there's also the flexibility of saving either a home or a work address and then different favorites. So rather than always having to type the same addresses, we can just add in this, our favorite addresses down along the very bottom. We could push the voice command prompt in the steering wheel if we wanted to be able to search for addresses that way too. So we go destination, and we can go to different destinations that way instead. So it is really, really nice from that perspective. Moving back home, we've now got the option for a phone. In order to search on your device, select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. Why, thank you. So on our phone, all we're going to do is look for Kia. We can change the name here. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But the PIN numbers match up, which is great. And three, two, one. Jump into our phone, and it's connecting there. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to say no for now. But we are connected there. So we've got what's... Yeah, of course, it's going to say no because I selected no on the phone. But I mean, obviously, if it's your car, you're going to say yes. From there, we've got what's going on with our phone. We've got our dial pad, our phone name, how much battery we have left, and then our current connection status on top of that. So it is very straightforward using this. If we hop back home now, go into phone projection, nothing's connected because we would need to set up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. If we go into our setup, we go into device connections. And then we've got a few other options now. So device connections, we've got the phone connected. And one cool thing is that if you just wanted to use your phone for audio and not for your phone, you can actually click off and you're strictly using it for audio instead. And then I'll show you what we've got multiple phones connected. You can be audio for one and then phone for the other. It's a really cool system there. Moving back, voice command prompts. Do we want to play or mute prompts as they come in? There's also system information, vehicle name, and then you can adjust your vehicle name from there. So if you want it to be Sally's Ride, whatever the case may be, you've got that flexibility. And then phone projection settings, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, do we want to enable disable? And then do we want to use split screen or do we want a full screen instead? I personally love the full screen, so I'll show you how that looks. And on that note, let's set up Apple CarPlay. So what you're gonna do, USB cable, down the center stack there, you're just plugging yourself in. Opposite end of the cable. There we go. And let's unlock. Do we want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we want to allow that. Okay, we have to say okay there. Oh, there we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. And we are fully connected. And I love how it's taking advantage of this full screen. It looks really nice. The colors are super sharp. But we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze. And we can use all of them right through the screen. Really, really nice. There isn't a pinch to zoom capability, unfortunately, but we can at least do a drag and drop. You can press the button along the side there if you wanted to adjust that way, if you wanted to zoom in and out, etc. Back out. You can search for addresses. You can use your microphone there instead. And then because we're hooked up over our phone, so whether that's Bluetooth or just over USB, we can also press and hold if we wanted to activate our Siri Assistant there as well, which is great. We push this button to go back home. And along the side, there's a little tray. So we've got current time, what's going on with our data connection, which map application has been open last. So if we jump out, that's gonna be Google Maps. If we switch out to Apple Maps instead, 
This one is what music was last opened up. So this is YouTube music, but if we opened up podcasts instead, and then this one is essentially like a various app. So whether that's calendar, settings, whatever the case may be, it's whatever various app has been opened last. So if we had Skype up, whatever the case may be. But there are a series of different things that are available and using them very straightforward. So listen now, we can browse different podcasts, look at library and things like that. But it is nice. And then on our phone, if we wanted to, all we're going to do is jump into our general. We go into CarPlay. We're going to go to the first key. So you're going to find your vehicle. You can allow CarPlay while locked, yes or no. You can forget the car or you can customize. So let's say if you love listening to podcasts or audiobooks, we're going to drag those up. So all you're doing is pressing and holding the little hamburger icon and dragging and dropping there. And it's a dynamic update. But if there are certain things you just don't want on the screen, you can delete them and it fully removes them from the screen, but it does add them back in here. So we could technically add them back in if we wanted to, but if you've done too much and you don't like it, you can just do a factory reset to bring you back to your main screen there instead. So it is very straightforward. And this technically is the home screen there. So we can go home screen or to our app views instead, button press to get back to the main screen. And that's going to be what's currently going on with our map. As you can see, food, drink, shopping, etc., based off of our map application. And then we've got our book that's playing right now. So audiobook, we can easily adjust that one. So it's very straightforward there. If we want to go back home, we just press the little Kia button there. And then if we go set up device connections. So we've got options there for different device connections, phone projection settings, and things like that. We can't make any changes there because we're connected. So if we disconnect, I want to show you something. Let's change it up to split screen. Going to go back home plug ourselves back in, jump back into CarPlay, and we've got a little split screen there instead. So as of right now, there's nothing going on. So if we go to our radio, we've got the radio currently playing. So if we start listening to a song, hop back inside, go into CarPlay, bump this out, and then we've got like this little split screen going on. So we've got what's going currently going on with our station, we can, tune in, we can tune this way instead and now. So you could use both systems simultaneously if you want to. Or we can just hop back home into our Kia screen, unplug ourselves from there if we want to, jump back into phone, and we can just push in order to connect over Bluetooth instead. So if you wanted to just hook up through Bluetooth, you've got that option, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, whatever the case may be. But I mean, you saw there, it's that simple to be able to hook up a phone, switching through Bluetooth, etc. Next up, setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So if you were on any of these other screens, you could just go phone there. But I mean, technically, we're still connected to the iPhone. So from here, all we're going to do, jump into setups, device connections, device connections. And we've got the iPhone that I did connect. But we could also add a new device. To search on your device, select the name that matches vehicle. Okay, and we're just looking for Kia. Perfect, passcodes match up. And we are connected, all right. Now, if you see there, we've got both phones. So what we could do is drag one up or, in, up or down, and that's who gets connection priority. So if you have multiple phones connected to the vehicle, who is it going to attempt to connect to first? And more importantly, what's it going to connect? So we've got audio one versus two, but if you just want to listen to audio on one device or phone, whatever the case may be, you've got that flexibility. We jump back home. We can go into our phone now. Which phone do we want to connect to? So let's go to the Galaxy. So it's going to connect over Bluetooth there. And we've got call history, dial pads, and things like that. So it's that straightforward. And then very similar to the iPhone side of things, we'd also have the flexibility of connecting through Android Auto. Starting. So all right, and connecting in. Just going to go USB, pull, lug ourselves in. It said unsuccessful because I selected no on the phone. But Android Auto, would you like to? I'm going to deny messages too. Next. All right. Android Auto, and there we go. And we are split screen in this one because I set it up split screen earlier. Or did I? Actually, I'm going to have to look at that one in a second. I'll show you whether or not it did. But we can see there we're kind of like a full-ish full, full -ish screen. We can't go a true full screen, unfortunately. But, I mean, this thing is fairly responsive. That's nice. 
That's good. We can search for addresses. We hop in here to go to different guidance information, root options, and things like that. Or we X out. Map application. We've got what's currently going on with our audio. Microphone. So if we wanted to activate our Google Assistant, we can go there. We can press and hold the voice command prompt on the steering wheel. And same idea. We can activate the Assistant that way instead. Along the very bottom, we've got our little tray. So we can hop back in that little tray. And then as you can see there, we've got Google Maps. This phone does technically have Waze installed. It's just not showing up through the screen. So just for whatever reason, Waze is not supported inside of these devices as of yet. And honestly, that's the same way with most manufacturers. It's very rare to actually see Waze being supported, even if it's installed on your phone. So unfortunately not there yet, but we still do have quite a few options, whether that's phone, weather, things like that. Or we can just hook up through Bluetooth instead if we wanted to go that route for phone calls and audio. Now, on the phone, if we search for Android Auto, we've got a few options. So customize the launcher, we've got Android Auto well locked and things like that. So there are a ton of different options that are available. You could customize the launcher. So very similar to the iPhone side of things with one key difference. So if we make any changes here, it doesn't actually take into effect until we close Android Auto on both the vehicle and the device and then relaunch it, then the changes will take into effect. So it's not dynamic like what we saw on the iPhone side of things, but it still is available there as an option. We can push this to go back to that little split screen, push again to get to this main view instead. Hopping into, oh, we can go full screen maps. Squirrel, that's amazing, okay. All right, I take that back. I wasn't sure if we could full screen it, but we can full screen it and it's full pinch to zoom capability. Haha, -ha, I love it. All right, that's really cool. I wasn't sure if that was the case. I love it. All we had to do was push the map icon. So if you're wanting to go full screen Android Auto and you're on this little split screen, we just push into the map full screen instead. Oh, that's really cool. Wish I had known that earlier. Is that? Okay, cool. So it's the split screen this way or full. Okay, cool. So it's full screen map or split screen for the other views instead. That's pretty neat. You learn something new every day. That's really nice. And then same idea. If we wanted to get back to the main screen, we push Kia and that's brought us back home again. We disconnect, phone projection, we can't do anything because that would be for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. But if we go into setup, device connections, same idea, we can go in a few options. If we go phone projection, split screen wasn't used. Okay, cool, perfect. So that's why we're really getting the full screen capability. But very similar to what we saw on the iPhone, we could do full screen, split screen, etc. And then if we go into our connections, we've got both phones that are connected. But if we go to delete devices, we can mark all. Delete, yes, three, two, one. And we are fully disconnected from both vehicle, uh, from both phones. So it's that simple, setting up Android and iPhone devices inside of this thing. Next up, moving back home. So we've got our map navigation, etc. Phone projections been covered off. That'll be dynamic Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Voice memos. So if we wanted to record memos right on the vehicle, we've got that flexibility. Climate settings. So we've got some climate settings down the center stack there. We've got different ones available right through the screen. So what's going on driver passenger side, auto mode. Do we want to just driver only mode? Do we want it going to our windshield face feet? Some sort of combination of all of the above. You can control the fan speed there on top of that, which is kind of neat right through the screen, like a little dragger. I like it. We can sync up as well. So the sync button, what that does, if the passenger sets to something different, we sync it up to whatever the driver side is. Series of other options available along the side. Do we want to activate certain things when you enter tunnels, auto dehumidify, defog, defrost, and things like that. Back out, there is valet mode, which you do need to have Kia Connect activated, but that's going to lock out certain feature sets when we have that mode activated. Quiet mode is useful. So what quiet mode will do is if you've got kids, you enter quiet mode and that's going to lower all of our, all of our volumes and make sure it doesn't go past certain levels so you don't wake up the littles in the back. HD radio, whether that's traffic, radar, fuel prices. Next up, you've got the radio there. So you've got FM, AM, Sirius XM. And then if you had a USB stick with MP3s, that would also be available there as an option. So all you're going to do plug yourself in down the center stack there in USB. Reading USB, and it's going to take a second and it just launches right in. So you do have that available, which is kind of nice. So you've got a ton of different options for the radio there too, which I like. But again, go back to radio, AM, FM, Sirius XM. 
And then if you're on, actually, so if we go AM, FM, we can add stations. So if you wanted to go to a preset, we can go that route. So we've just tuned to 94.9 and that's locked into a station there. If we want to add in other ones, so let's say if we want to go to 97.7 and we want to add that one in, once we, add, once we tune to the station, we hit add station there and that's saved it as a preset. If you're not sure which stations are available, we just go there and that launches every station that's available for AM, FM, Sirius, XM. We can also save out individual ones here if we want. Launch into preset, we've got all of these things available. You can reorder them if you wanted that route. So all we would do, reorder, hamburger icon, drop as you'd like, or we delete presets. We can select whichever ones we want to delete. Delete, yes, and it's deleted the station. So it's that simple to be able to do it. Next up, if you jump into Sirius XM, that gives us a few more settings that are available too. So what we can do is save presets the way we normally would. We can also enter a station this way. If we go into full screen mode, that's going to change up the dynamic look of it as well, which is kind of neat. But if we push this, that gives us options for serious channels. We can delete set settings. We can jump into a series of different sound settings that are available too. So we've got a few different options that are available there. We'll jump into the sound settings in just a minute. Moving into our setup, options for vehicles, so driver assistance settings. One really cool thing is that we can push into any of these settings in order to get right into them as well if we want. So it's pretty neat, but we've got a ton of options available. So we've got different options for eco mode. Do we want a coasting guide, yes or no? So it's essentially a fuel saver mode. Regeneration, so it's going to help us out with regenerative braking. And then EV driving. I mean, obviously you're getting a hybrid because you want to maximize it. So that is really useful. And honestly, if you want to get the best possible performance out of your electric or your hybrid, I'd recommend turning these things on. Head-up display, so that gives us the flexibility of using our head-up display. It's going to show our speed and a few other things. We can actually figure out which we, what we want showing up, so whether that's turn-by-turn -turn directions or convenience settings or blind spot system and things like that. And we've also got a few other options. So if we want to rotate it out, we want to adjust the brightness, we'd have that flexibility too, which is kind of nice. Sync to the seat position, so as we raise and lower the seat, it's automatically going to raise and lower the head-up display too, which is nice. So we can raise lower the way that the display is, we can rotate it just based off of the way that we sit and what we personally like. Moving back out, options for the cluster. You can change up the brightness of the cluster screen if you want to. Toggle on a blue light filter, so it's useful for later on at night to reduce eye strain. You can have it come on automatically. You can schedule it to come on at certain times on top of that. So these are grayed out because we haven't selected it. But once it's selected, we can schedule if we want to or let it go automatic. And how warm or not warm do you want it? Tons of options. Camera settings, what do we want showing up there? So when we are in our reverse setting, so we hop in the reverse, we've got our guidance lines there and then our park sensing system. So whether or not these things are showing up or not, so let's say we get rid of parking lines, you can see there that parking line now is gone. So that one's a matter of preference. I just think for a safety perspective, that's a really useful setting to keep enabled. Different options for climate control. So do we want to recirculate air, defog, defrost, etc. For seats, the seating easy access is a neat one. Because what's going to happen is, once you get into the vehicle, it's going to lower the seat and back it up if we want to get in and out of the vehicle a little bit easier. Or we can have nothing happen. So it's essentially going to keep the driver's seat locked into place instead. If your seat doesn't have driver memory, I mean, obviously you wouldn't have to worry about this one, but it is pretty useful to have. I just normally just recommend keeping it off instead. Moving back, different light options. So there is ambient light in different parts of the vehicle. We can link ambient light to our drive mode if we want to. We can have a custom color. So if we want it to be a little bit more unique, we would have that flexibility. And that's showing up in a few different parts of the vehicle. And if you see there, so as we hop into any of these things, it's going to give us a little bit more of a display of what we, what we can do as we go. So we hop back out and it's essentially going to collapse the menu there as well. Turn signals. So see here that it goes three times, five times, seven times, or just a single time instead. Our welcome mirrors and lights and things like that. Do we want that showing up on the outside? So it's going to shine down as we approach the vehicle later on at night. Our headlamp delay. So when we go to lock the vehicle, do the headlamp stay on for us? And then our high beam assist, which I mentioned that one earlier. So at night, if the vehicle recognizes somebody's oncoming, it's automatically going to reduce the brightness of the beams for us. 
different options for doors. So do we want the vehicle to lock when we shift? Do we want it to unlock when we park? So the doors will lock when we go to drive and they're gonna unlock when we park. To press unlock when we press the unlock button on the key fob. Do we wanna activate our power lift gate? Yes or no. And then there's a few different options. So smart lift gate is gonna give you the flexibility of just walking up to the tailgate and then that's going to automatically open up the rear end for us. Using the smart lift gate feature inside of the Nero is very straightforward. So one thing we have to do is make sure that the vehicle is locked first. And then a few things have to happen. We have to get about 10 to 15 feet away for about 10 to 15 seconds. So just backing up here, vehicle is locked. So huge shout out Durham Kia. Thanks for giving me access to this thing to shoot the video. Like I said, 10 to 15 seconds, and then you can start walking towards the back end. So we should be good there. And all you're gonna do, walk your way back, make sure that you've got the key fob on you, but watch this. So it's recognized the fob. It's opened up the lift gate for us automatically. So beautiful feature. Unfortunately, the one thing this doesn't have is the lift gate walk away, but it at least has the lift gate up feature, which is great. So we can close it on the key fob, just press and hold. We can press and hold here. And there's also one on the inside, just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel. And then for our opening height, which level do we want? Or do we want to set our own height instead? So useful if it's a little bit too tall for your garage. Very straightforward. And then also remote window control. So you'd have the flexibility of being able to remote, uh, remote re roll the windows down. So what we're going to do, see me So the vehicle's locked. We're going to press the unlock button twice. But on the second button press, you're going to hold. So you're going to go one, two, and hold. We release it in order to pause, or you could just press and hold again in order to be able to restart. And back down they go. So it is a power down from the key fob, but in order to roll them back up again, unfortunately, it is a manual process. So really, really neat. Next up, we've got digital key. So we do have digital key available as an option inside of some versions of the vehicle. And you can set up your smartphone as a key, which does require the Key Connect app on your phone. I just obviously don't have Key Connect on my phone and I can't activate this vehicle, which is why this is grayed out. But honestly, it's very straightforward. Once you download the Key Connect app on your phone, you connect it to your vehicle and then it's just a matter of setting it up. So it gives you the option of selecting and setting that certain feature up instead. Added convenience settings. Do we want a rear occupant alert? So when we turn the vehicle off, it's going to give us a reminder in the cluster screen to check the back seats. Our intervals. So as we get the vehicle service, it's going to tell us when our next service appointment's due. Same idea for when we need to get our oil changed. Wireless charge system. So it's going to let us know right in the center stack when we have a, a phone that's wirelessly charging. It's going to give us a little indicator light. Our wiper in reverse. So if we've got our windshield wipers going and we put the vehicle in reverse, do we want our rear wiper to come on automatically as well? Very useful setting. Pretty neat, but that's going to be the basics of vehicle. Series of different navigation settings. The big ones that you need to know here. Guidance, which things do you want to avoid? For detail guidance, whether or not you want it to be detailed in the turns that are coming up. For voice guidance, do you want that to happen as we get closer to the destination? Yes or no? with different alerts for our map. Do we want it to be a map size for standard font or do we want larger font instead? So make it a bit easier to read. We can change up the map colors, our vehicle symbol. So if you want a different Star Trek -y symbol, you'd have that flexibility. And then what type of scaling do we want for the vehicle? So as we get in and out closer to our obstacle or closer to our destination, is it going to zoom in or out for us? And then different options for our navigation there as well. So user data, GPS information, do we want it to auto recenter the map for us? Back out, series of different sound settings. So do you want to have speed dependent volume? So it's automatically going to lower or raise the volume based off of how fast we're going. Do we want it to, vol do we want it to limit the volume if we've started the vehicle up? So if you've got the volume cranked and then we go to start the vehicle up, it just won't be as loud. What position do we want for the volume there as well? Where do we want it focused? Matter of preference. Tone, do we want the treble mid range bass played with? Usually, something like that gives out pretty good audio. So, like minus two on the treble, plus like three or four on the bass. Guidance, so we can adjust all of our different guidance volumes and things like that. Do we want to get rid of the beeping? Yes, no. Do we want to adjust everything? So many different volume settings that we can adjust for guidance, for navigation voices, and things like that. 
we have a ton of different options that are available. Radio noise. Do we want to reduce that? You're not going to notice radio noise really all that much inside of it, but it is kind of nice because it's like a background like fuzziness noise reducer. Same idea. Do we want to have all of our priority warnings? Yes or no. Connected devices. So Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. When we have these things connected, what voice or what volume do we want for these things too? So that's one nice thing that I love about Kia is with our sound, we can adjust so many different sounds for each individual setting. Moving into our device connections, we've already seen these ones. So do we want what devices are connected, our prompts, our Bluetooth system information for changing the vehicle name. User profiles. So we saw that at the home screen as well, but we can adjust and change different users. Honestly, recommend setting up a profile if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle. And all you do, if you want to, we just go to change user. If you want to set one up, change out to driver one, driver two, et cetera. So it is pretty neat that we can go through and it's so easy all at the same time, but it's going to adjust everything for us. Like it's adjusting our seats, side view mirrors, all of our presets and things like that, just based off of what profile you've set it up for. So very useful. Voice recognition. Do we want to get prompts? Yes, no. So that's when we use our voice assistant there. Do we want less prompts? I honestly recommend going the less prompt route but that's a matter of preference. Some different options for screen layout. So if we wanted to look at a screensaver, so the screensaver is useful because if the vehicle's off, or if the screen's off, I should say, we can show just a digital clock. You can show an analog one with different watch faces, or you can have nothing showing up. And then you've got what's showing up on your split screen there as well. Different options for the display. So we've seen all of these settings earlier are three unique buttons. So we've got two different ones on the steering wheel, and then one that's right down the center stack there when we're in that mode. So you've got to be in the map, map uh, the map mode there in order to be able to see this custom button. But each button, you can get it to do different things for you instead. Key connect, which I can't go through right now, unfortunately, because I don't have it set up. And then general settings. So series of different things. We've got our vehicle settings, system information, so how much storage is left on the vehicle? What our current date and time is? Do we want it set automatically or do we want to manually set it? Do we want to have daylight savings time there? Yes, no. Language, English, French, Spanish, or Korean. And then our keyboard. Do we want QWERTY keyboards and default languages there? Do we want to measure our distance or speed in kilometers or miles, Celsius, Fahrenheit? So many different options. And when we go miles, it's going to change all these things out, and it even changes out what's going on with the cluster screen there as well. Different media options for changing our volumes and things like that. Or we can do a reset if we want to bring the vehicle back to factory reset just for the driver or individual profile we're on, or reset all settings and bring the vehicle back to a default screen instead. So tons of different setup settings there. Next up, you've got media. So a few options there. So as of right now, we've currently got the song playing because I'm connected over USB. If we go on to list, it's going to show us what songs are currently available. Hopping back, we can press here to turn the display off or look at different media sources. So you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM, you've got USB, Sounds of Music, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, so many different options. So which options you get are going to be based off of what's currently connected to the vehicle. And we can get to this setting either through the bottom here, so through media, or we can connect right through this screen instead. So you've got a few different ways you can go through the screen to get to it. So there are quite a few options that are available inside of this screen, but I know that's a lot of information there, but that's how you use the media screen inside of the Kia Nero.